Right now, the holiday break is over for Congress as they head back to work this week. Republicans have a long to-do list before the midterm elections if they want to hold on to their majority on Capitol Hill. The Democrats will need to flip two seats in November to take over the Senate. I think you always have to go into an election year with an awareness, particularly when you have a majority and it's a midterm election in, in, in a presidential term, that the party that is uh, in power typically loses seats. But given that, I think the best way for us to overcome what might be uh, some of those historical um, you know, trends is for us to put up a record of accomplishment. And that's why passing tax reform, meaningful tax reform that's going to bring uh, you know, meaningful tax relief to hardworking Americans in this country, middle-income families. I think is going to be really uh, essential as people start to evaluate this president, uh, this Republican majority. But the most pressing item for now is a funding measure to avoid a government shutdown, which will need bipartisan support. Joining me now is the director of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia, Larry Sabato. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here today. We appreciate you're the perfect guy to dig into all of this as we head into 2018. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, and it's going to be a great New Year for political analysts because it's a national <laughs> election again. <laughs> right. It's like one big gift, right, as we head into the midterms. Uh, as we do head into the midterms, of course, there have been some predictions that this could be a blue wave year, uh, you know, similar to the, revol the Republican Revolution in 1994, but in reverse. Do you buy that? Do you think this is a year for a blue wave? Uh, it's way too soon to say. Uh, is this a year that is likely to favor Democrats? The answer is yes, because it's a midterm election year in a Republican administration and Republican Congress. Having said that, look, it's January 2nd. This is the day for flights of fancy by both parties. <laughs> uh, if you listen to the Democrats, there's going to be the biggest blue wave since the one that sunk the USS Poseidon. If you listen to the Republic, I know that was a movie, I should say that. <laughs> Uh, the Republicans will tell you they'll, they maybe will lose two or three seats, but they can see taking this Democratic seat and that Democratic seat in the House and the Senate. All of it's justified on January 2nd. Mm -hmm. So we have to see what happens. I thought Senator Thune was right when he said one of the keys to this election year is whether Republicans are able to credibly link themselves uh, to the, the improving economy using the tax bill. Also, they need for President Trump to improve his ratings. He's got to get his job approval up. That will also help them, and it will keep the size of the wave down. So digging into that just a little bit more, many Republicans are claiming the big victory off the tax reform bill. Not every Republican voted for it. Uh, and meanwhile, the president also saying that this is a big victory. So as you mentioned, they do seem to see this as the seawall to stop the blue wave as they head into 2018. If, they, if the economy really does surge and we see improved jobs and the middle class really does see a little bit more money in their pockets, Granted, we, they don't file their taxes until the following year, until post-midterm. Uh, will that be enough? I mean, pocketbook issues consistently rate at the very top when voters head to the polls. Well, it's not going to be enough to save every endangered senator and House member. But it might well be enough to save some who are in very competitive races that could go either way. And, you know, for in, in the Senate, for example, let's not forget the map is incredibly favorable to the Republicans. Doesn't mean they'll be able to hold on to the Senate, but it sure means they'll have to lose a lot of races they ought to win to lose control of the Senate. The uh, improving economy uh, could help that, and they've got to use it well, and I'm sure they will. That's what they're going to be working on all year. Yeah, those red-leaning states may certainly help the GOP. Let's talk a little bit about what's on the legis what's coming up legislatively. In January alone, they got to get the funding bill, and it seems like immigration has been sucked into this. For just one example of a potential impasse, Democrats have said we're not signing unless we see some effect on the Dreamers. We want to help the Dreamers, and the president has said, "Sure, you will get a DACA deal, but I want my wall among other measures related to immigration." Uh, do they get past that impasse, and where where do they compromise? On, all, and on so many uh, issues heading forward into the midterms. If you're a friend of Senator McConnell or you're a friend of Speaker Ryan, send them a big package of migraine excedrin for the new year. Because in the Senate in particular, McConnell is going to have to get the votes of nine Democrats in addition to holding all 51 Republicans. See, we're past the 51 vote rule. Now it's 60 votes to pass these key items in the Senate. 
So uh, either there's going to be some degree of bipartisanship or nothing major is going to be passed, including right in the beginning here uh, when a lot of deadlines are coming up very quickly. It isn't going to be easy. You, you look at the new senator from Alabama, Doug Jones, I think he would be a vote open to the Republicans on at least some things. The same with Senator Manchin. This is an election year for him. It's different than last year. Senator Heitkamp in North Dakota. Uh, Senator Joe Donnelly in Indiana, Senator McCaskill in Missouri. These are all Democrats, but they have to run in states that Trump carried handily uh, come November. So there are Democratic votes available to the Republicans. It's just tough to get up to nine. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see particularly what happens in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, some of those uh, uh, states that are out yes. there will be really ones to watch. Uh, Larry Sabato, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great New Year. You too.